Hi and welcome to the 10 square meter workshop. This time I want to talk to you about some modifications I've made to my drill milling machine. Coming up after this. This is the machine in question. Made in the Far East, they were sold under a variety of names over the years. I've had this one for 40 years. It has the functions of both a drill and a milling machine. As a drill you turn the wheel in the normal way, but if you engage the clutch you can use the hand wheel for fine adjustment. It's a pretty solid machine, but it has one or two annoying features, not least changing speed. You change speed by moving belts under the large top cover. This is quite tedious, and it means you don't change speed unless you really have to. The modern solution to this is to fit a VFD or variable frequency drive. Although here I'm converting my drill mill, it could equally be done to other machinery, such as a wood lathe. There are two steps to this. First is to replace the old single phase motor with a new three phase motor. Although slightly smaller than the original, it is actually twice the power two horsepower instead of one. It was remarkably easy to change. I just wound the top assembly down and had a box on the base which supported the motor as I bolted it and unbolted it. The new motor is wired to the VFD shown here mounted to the sidewall. You have to get the right flavour. This is a single phase to 380 volt three phase converter. I wanted to be able to use the front panel switch to turn the motor on and off. This is not a contactor, it's just a latching switch. I did this by connecting the live and neutral wires that used to go to the motor together, so that when you press the contactor, it shorts the live and neutral on the wire that used to go to the mains plug. These are wired to the panel to allow for an external switch. Note that I also used the earth lead to connect the mains plug to the machine, as the VFD has no provision for earthing. I programmed the front panel to give the RPM of the spindle. I did this using a modulus tachometer. As you will see if I start the machine. The speed is set by adjusting the small potentiometer on the front panel. I could have had a remote one on the machine, but after changing belts, reaching across to turn a pod is really very, quite easy. I can now choose a wide range of speeds, from very slow up to much faster than it used to be before. The other modification I've made is a digital readout for the z-axis. These units are quite cheap and work very well. There is a scale mounted to the fixed part and a moving slide. The count is easily zeroed and will retain its readings between power-offs. Because of the way the drive is connected, you can never really rely on the z-axis scale. Mounted on the front of the machine, this has proved to be very accurate. Other small mods are a ring magnet on each side, one to hold the chuck key on the left hand side, and one on the right hand side to hold the spanners for unclamping the column bolts. These are simple mods, but they've transformed the use of the machine. That's all for this time. See you next time.